Former president, uh, pres presidential aspirant Kingsley Mogalu announces a six-party plan merger ahead of 2023's election. And lawmakers withhold details of 134 billion naira allocation despite calls for open national assembly. Well, this is Cross Politics. I am Mary Annika. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, seven political parties have indicated interest to merge their structures in order to form a mega party. Now, a former presidential candidate in the 2019 elections, Professor Kingsley Mogalu, dropped the hint. He, who also was a deputy former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, said that the U-turn by the Senate uh, on the electronic transmission of results was a positive sign that the 2023 general elections would be transparent. He also went on to say that 2023 should be a battle between the old and the new, between the old Nigeria and the possibilities for a new Nigeria. He called on youths to register vote and colonize the future that rightfully belongs to them. Well, joining us to discuss this is political analysts uh, Ambrose Igboke and Oponabo Inkotara. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Good evening, Maria. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, Ambrose, is, is very interesting um, that Mogalu is interested in uh, another merger or hinting at another. Now, let's go back to 2019. Um, there was a merger which included the former education minister, Obieze Kwesili, um, very famous um, speaker, um, Feladuro Toye, and, and, and other people. This, this merger was supposed to upstage somewhat uh, the big political parties, but we all know how that turned out at the end of the day. So why should we be uh, interested in this new merger? Uh, well, um, uh, the uh, smaller political parties in Nigeria uh, have been trying to merge. Remember, just uh, like two months ago, we had the issue of the third force uh, that was muted uh, by uh, Professor Patutomi and some other people. We also had uh, uh, the issue of uh, this one coming up now. In the last election, especially the 2015 election, I did argue that we have too many political parties. Uh, it became so cumbersome to even call out the uh, results of the presidential election where we had nine, over 90 political parties that participated. That is a mockery of democracy. Therefore, we need to streamline uh, party registration. Every political party must not be a national party. There should be some political parties that play only at the state level. There should be some political parties that play at regional level. Then there will be political parties that will not play at the national level. I think it is time to categorize political party participation in election in Nigeria. Otherwise, it would still become like a mockery of democracy where you have over 90 political parties participating. It makes a nonsense of the process, if I must submit. They're coming now. The last measure that really, really shook the land, uh, political landscape of Nigeria was the merger of 2014 uh, between the ACN, CNPP, ANPP, and a splinter group of the PDP called the New PDP. These political uh, affiliations themselves were very powerful blocks on their own. Remember that uh, President Muhammad Barari, uh, before he won the 2015 election, had contested earlier three times. And in one of the elections, it garnered up to 12 million votes with the CPC party. And of course, we know that the ACN has been ruling the Southwest for a very long time. Then the new PDP that emerged were, uh, uh, you know, uh, elements from the PDP that were very powerful individuals. So that's where, so that was because of those formidable alliances of these uh, five or six blocks. That was what we were able to wrestle power from the PDP at the center, uh, at the central stage in Abuja. Now, when you look, compare that with what is happening now, um, the measures that we are seeing now are not very formidable. They are not. They are just um, 
a coterie of uh, small political parties trying to come together and see whether they can have a unified uh, uh, voice. But they are not strong political parties in terms of uh, going to threaten any uh, the status quo in any way. So I will urge them, rather than trying to look at the presidential, if they can merge in, their, in the various states to see how they can participate and keep at the state level, hmm. get some seats in the House of Assembly, in the Houses of Assembly, uh, get some seats on the uh, House of Reps, or even the Senate, and then let them start from there. Everything must not be looking at presidential election, presidential election. Okay. Political parties that don't have even a spread in, some, in, in the states they were formed are looking for presidential election. So okay. I think we should, other political parties should re-strategize and see how the measures can be to get power, first of all, at the local level, states, and then regional level. In that way, they can build on the momentum and contest future elections where they can make greater impact. All right, I'm coming to you, Mr. Tara, because uh, I, I want to pick up from where he stopped. Let's talk about party structures. These, um, for the want of a better word, smaller political parties do not seem to have structures, just as he has said. And if we were to look at them through a microscope of sorts, they do not even have structures at the tiniest of localities. I'm talking about the tiniest level or the lowest level, which is the local government levels and the councillorship levels, um, which should, like he said, should be their main focus. So if he's saying that these parties do not have structures, why do we have these many political parties if we're not insisting that they have some structures of sorts? Because they all seem to be sleeping parties until election season. Um, I think you're just having a panoramic view of the whole thing. Uh, but I, we should take a microscopic view of it. Now, the melding of political parties, just like you rightly said, talking of the PDP, the ANPP, the CPC, the new PDP and co, into the APC, was basically to rest far from the PDP. Because the PDP had the financial and numerical strength to ward off any competition. So what they did, which was a master stroke, was to meld, come together, to rest far from the PDP. And it worked. Now, talking of what uh, Morgalu talked about, the merging of six political parties, there are a few questions we are going to ask ourselves. Is it ideated just to rest far? Are we talking, is it phallocentric or altruistic reason? Do we have analogousness of ideologies? Because even if you met and eventually you succeed, which is actually a tall order, but if you met and eventually you succeed, at the end of the day, we'll still be back to where we are today, or even worse. Mm. But talking of success first, let us also not forget, nothing tried, nothing gained. That is one. Two, I think they are also exploiting the... Uh, infamy of the present administration. And also don't forget that these measures we are talking about, we are only seeing the likes of Morgano and Co. These are parties that will be populated by a lot of disgruntled people in the PDP and in the APC. Will it be? So I don't, yeah, yes. I because instead of, I'm of sorry, the reason, why I'm, the reason why I'm questioning you is because instead of seeing these people move to other parties, and I'm not even pointing to the likes of APGA or the SDP or even Labour Party, which we haven't really heard anything from them lately, um, we see more of the crisscrossing between the APC and the PDP. Just yesterday, the deputy that, governor that, of Anambra I, I, has I moved to the APC. Before, I was addressing that before you interjected. I was, I was addressing that. I said a lot of disgruntled people in the APC and the PDP will now defect. They will look for another ground to bring their interest to push up. And this might just be the top force. That is the truth about it. Because most people who defected from PDP to APC, if they realize that the ambition will be frustrated in APC, 
they will go, they will all come together and strengthen this very political party that Morgalu is talking about. So you cannot just dismiss it. Because as it stands now, they don't have the clout, they don't have the financial strength, muscle. But it, they have started, and it's going to attract a lot of political big meets who strongly believe that the ambitions in APC and PDP might be made hamstrung. And they will defect to this new political party, depending on how the foundation is laid. And that is why I said, at the end of it all, these same money bags, these same big wigs that we are running away from are the same persons that are going to control. Because politics is all about money and financial strength in Nigeria. I was going to ask that and question. I was going to ask how, how the third force will this retain this, its powers. This, this emerging party. They are the same persons that will control the emerging party that Mogalu is ideating right now. So that is the fear. Otherwise, we should not just dismiss them. I agree with my brother when he said we have too many political parties, but it's all the beauty of democracy, save the financial implications. It's, mm. it's costing the federal government a whole lot. And most of these parties were actually formed for gastric reasons. They were not formed because for any ideological reason or to prosecute any serious political war. They were formed because they know that when you form a political party, you are going to get some grants from the federal government. And that's how most of these political parties were there from. So I agree we are going to prove. But that, to me, is not even the problem as we speak right now. The problem right now is how to get a formidable force that can wrest power from this uh, uh, present government, this APC government. That, is, to me, is what is important. And that is a priority to me. And not really, because most of these political parties, I mean, if at the end of the day, they don't have the cloud, they'll fizzle out. There's no doubt about that. I think I started to register a lot of them. <laughs> Excuse me, some of them are even in court contesting it. So, to me, that is secondary. Let us think of how we are going to rest power, and not just rest power from the present APC, because it is not about the nomenclature. It has to do with the people, the population, those that are going to populate the party. So, it's not about APC, PDP, YWC, or whatever. We are talking about credible, the emergence of credible candidates. Okay. And that is why a lot of people might consider this top post. But it is also going to be consequent upon the characters we are going to see in this new uh, uh, political party that, they, that will be formed by this merger. Ambrose, he's saying that I, I'm, still str I'm still struggling with the idea of trying to wrest power uh, as, it, as, as it were in 2015, and we're still hearing the same narrative today, wrest power from the Buhari administration. And we've seen, we've seen the aftermath of just trying to get into power and not having a plan, a clear-cut plan, or a blueprint of sorts that could help steer the nation in the right direction. Instead, we're nose deep in debt, and, and, and of course, the economy has sunk. Uh, Naira is nothing to write home about. So should that be the priority of these political parties? Shouldn't they be a bit more futuristic? Or um, should they not be looking at the bigger picture instead of just thinking about now? Politics in Nigeria is about uh, self-preservation, first of all, before nationalistic interests. Uh, I think we should be clear about that. Um, then, when you talk about uh, this uh, proposed measure, well, let's wait and see the caliber of personalities or the elements of disgruntledness in the major political parties that will engender that paradigm shift to, for them to nest with this new political party. If what happened in 2013, 2014 does not repeat itself, then this measure will just be an exercise of futility. Because what happened was that the parties, some political parties that have structures, that have the money bags, that have the personality, that have the clout, came together. They were not just small parties. Apart from coming together of the opposition parties, these strong opposition parties, the ANDP, CPC, and ACN, they still went inside to balkanize the ruling party and moved out 
key people, some governors and powerful senators from the PDP. That is why, why they even succeeded. So I'm not saying that in this uh, 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 political arrangement. So unless there is something that will happen to the two major political parties that will engender that kind of shift we saw in 2013, 2014, that made top people, sitting governors, sitting senators, move away to form alliance with the opposition. Unless that happens, then uh, this one will just be another exercise uh, for mere uh, political uh, gymnastics. Then when you come to uh, the issue of funding, if the money bags don't move from the political parties, because these politicians know how to settle, settle these issues among themselves. They can be settled with political appointment. They can be settled with board, ministerial appointment, ambassadorial appointment, contracts, other things. So it is not that when the money bag is withdrawn to, he looks, he weighs his options. When we see most of the big people moving from one political party to another, the APC person moves another big party, the PDP. The PDP person moves another party, another big party, APC. That is what has been happening for the past uh, three years. So the the first of all, there's an economic, a financial burden for a money bag to move to a small political party. Mm. It will be the sole financier. Because party funding in Nigeria is still a function of the individuals that make up the political party. They are the ones that bring the money, they are the ones that form the party. So most of them, I think, consider that don't want to go into that venture because for most of the politicians, politics is business. It's yeah. strategic business. It's strategic investment. So most of them cannot just come and throw down their money for the sake of it. So they want to calculate very well. When you move to APC, even if you don't get elected, you get appointed somehow. Mm. If you don't get appointed, you get compensated. So that, that is how it works. Therefore, this, you cannot uh, leave one, uh, you cannot leave, uh, uh, what, what we say, you cannot leave uh, a big house and then stay in the cash down and you think that you can muster the same uh, power. So, so the issue is that you, it, it's not the same. So, but I understand that these small political parties now realize that, I mean, they are too minute to make any statement. Therefore, this measure is supposed to give them time to make. But again, I think it's too late already because we don't have barely 10 months to primaries and all those things mm. to take place against 2023. Uh, the arrangement would have started earlier because what we start after the measure, then what? Let me tell you what happens immediately after the measure. Distribution of political positions, distribution of party positions. Who becomes... The chairman of the new party. I was about to ask that because egos, we secretary. have egos here at play. There's going to be a lot oh, of, of egos at play. Yeah, we know, know that it's a game smooth. of numbers and like you said, money has to... So, of course, the, the, the positions are going to go to the men who are the ones who are injecting the monies into the party. So for, for a guy like Kingsley Mogalu, if he does have the money bags from the other parties come to this force that he's trying to put together, he just might be, you know, um, he might be... Shrugged, uh, rather shoved to the background. No, what, what, no. Happened, like, what happened in 2013 and 2014 was that there were already established leaders in these setups, men who understand the game, men who have been in the game for forever, men who were seeking a pound of flesh, men who were seeking vengeance. So that the, a mix of all these was the passion behind uprooting the, 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 the presidency at the center. But now, what's the driving force? The driving force is, I think, mostly is, let's be here. Let's make some noise. Let's have some uh, formidable uh, representations. Let's not just fizzle out. Because mm -hmm. when they merge now, the next thing we call, who will be party chairman, who will be secretary, who will be vice chairman, where will they zone it? Then when they finish that one, they will not start about primaries. Who shall we zone the uh, flag, uh, flag bearer of the politics to? Who will be mm. this? Who will be that? And then that is where you really see the problem. Why it was easy in 2013 for those people that formed APC was because there were already established leaders that could just, we didn't need too many people. Already CPC had uh, Buhari, uh, ACN had Tinubu, uh, the other political parties, for example, had uh, somebody like Ambechi and uh, the NPDP had somebody like Ambechi and uh, Saraki. So we didn't need too many people to negotiate. Hmm. We just needed a few men 
because those are the ones holding these carcasses and blocks together. But okay. in this case now, you have to negotiate with, because uh, they are, they are uh, small political parties, it's different interests. Everybody wants to cling to his own, uh, you know, you know, this thing. So when we are waiting, we hope that something will be thrown up, okay. but let them be strategic in okay. whatever they want to do. Uh, this Mr. idea of coming together to rest power at the center should not be their priority. Okay. Their priority should be to build a powerful political base that can contest election, seek election from the, uh, from the grassroots, build it, rest somewhere. And, and uh, all that cannot be accomplished in 10 months, like you and said. And that is it. Yeah. Mr. Tyre, let's talk about the other political parties because, again, I'm still trying to think it through. Um, why anybody who's aggrieved within the PDP or the APC would jump over the heads of the SDP or APCA. I mean, for now, as we see, APCA seems to be existing in just a number of states. Um, and then we have the Labour Party that I, like, that I referred to earlier on as almost non-existent because we haven't really heard anything from them. Um, would those not be better parties to merge, have a merger agreement with? And I'm not in any way saying that other parties cannot have a merger. But there are people and structures in those parties, better structures uh, than, you know, these other parties that Mr. Mogalu is trying to get a measure with. Um, looking at what is happening, I mean, of course, like Mr. Boke said, it's, it's a bit late in the day. Ten months is too short a time for a measure to happen. Um, but if there were to be other alternatives, shouldn't those parties be considered because of the structure that they have across the country? Politics is seen as, like uh, Ambrose rightly said too, politics is seen as one great betray. I know in my uh, opening statement, I asked three major questions. I said, is it ideated for altruistic reason, selfish reason, allocentric reason, or for what reason? Because is it just to rest power? And so most of this uh, I don't want to refer to them as characters. These personalities who are today talking of a merger also have their own interests to protect. And if their own interest will be subdued in merging with these other political parties, then definitely they will not be willing to so do. Because they are actually not going to rest back for national reasons, for allocentric reasons, for selfless reasons, they want to rest power for their own selfish gains. That is the truth about it. It's all about, I, it, it's what we call the drum major instinct. So it's all about, I, what, what do I do? First and foremost, the issue of bad governance, I completely agree, but it's being contemporized and it's being propagandized as a subterfuge to discredit a government just like what this present government did in order to give themselves some level of acceptance and credibility. I don't see any sincerity of purpose. Because if there is actually a sincerity of purpose, it is actually too late in the day to talk of forming a new political party. I mean, I, it's not, how do you rationalize it? Just 10 months to the election, this government has done 500 days or thereabout to stay office, and you're talking of media trying to form a new political by this time, from the world to the national, they are like jokers to me. So that's why, so unless we have the unseen hand, you know, in most cases you have the hand of, uh, how is it called, the hand Esau. of Jacob, but the voice of Esau. Oh yes, you know, something like that. And I think that is what is playing out. Otherwise, I sincerely don't think that these people sincerely believe that they can achieve what they are getting. I don't think they, they believe that they can achieve it. Unless somebody, they are just the ones that are being seen, somebody's beating the drum, certain group of persons are beating the drum for them. Hi. So if you talk of the, the existing Labour Party, uh, JLP, Labour Party and Co, to come together, well, uh, I agree with you, that would have, that would have made more sense. But again, most of these persons use these parties as a bargaining chip. So, yeah, they try, they try to keep their parties so that when it comes, you see that 
pledging our loyalty or our allegiance to, for example, now hypothetically, you have the Labour Party in Anambra. Now, when it's go to the election, what they do is they go and sell themselves to the uh, to a, polit a political party they believe might win, and they say, "Oh, they pledge the Labour Party in Anambra has pledged its loyalty to so so to the ZLP or to the, to Abba, or, and that is what goes on. So it's a, it's a gravy train, and those Labour and this Labour Party will not want to merge with ZLP because if it does, then it has lost its substance and usefulness. Mm. Interesting. And that's why my brother Andrews was talking of the unnecessary for no more political parties we have in this country. So those ones will not want to make, not at all. What led to the melding of political parties in 2013 and 2014 was just beyond resting power. A lot of people were scared that they were going to be jailed. So it was just beyond resting power. It has to do with their freedom. A lot of people felt if we lose out, they, we are definitely going to be in prison. So it was a do or die affair. And that's why you have the cacophony in the, the, the squadron teams today in the party. Mm. So these ones will not make that now because it is a bargaining chip for them. That's why the Labour Party, the ZLP, and Co. will not want to come together to rest power. Because when the elections are closed, they see it as they are going to make more money. We are going to pledge our loyalty to this political party. And want to pledge our loyalty. So we are going to make X amount for it because if we go to the polls, we are going to lose out. We don't have what it takes to win that election, not even a councillorship election. Interesting. Uh, finally, let me let me let me quickly ask, and, and this question goes to both you and Ambrose because we have just about two minutes to go. So I'll share the minutes uh, between you. Um, let's look at the person of Kingsley Mogalu. Uh, aside from him being a former deputy governor at the Central Bank of Nigeria, he's um, thrown his hat into the ring a couple of times on this matter. Uh, and I remember at the beginning of this conversation, um, Ambrose said that sometimes it's best to start where you are instead of always gunning for the presidential ticket. Um, but I'd like to hear from you both um, what you think about him and his ambition. And maybe the, he might just be another President Buhari who would try many times and then finally emerge as president. What do you think? I'll start with you, Ambrose, and then uh, Mr. Tara will wrap it up. Well, I, uh, I must first of all commend uh, Professor Kesley Moalo for being consistent uh, because we have always advocated that men of uh, high personality like him, uh, reputable technocrats like him, should join the fray. And so he has taken the government for a long time and joined. So that, for that, I commend him. And I'm happy that a man of his caliber is in the race. Um, he should keep, on, keep at it and uh, ensure that uh, he also tries as much as possible to, you know, be very strategic in this. For example, uh, Rocha Sokorocha those days contested for presidency under AE or something, Action Alliance. And uh, when the man saw he was not going through, he just uh, did some strategic rethinking. And he came back, contested for the governor of Imo State and won. <laughs> so these are strategic thinking, you know, sometimes. Today it's in the Senate. So um, that is how sometimes this. So... Uh, just as my colleague said, a lot of people have different reasons for participating in politics. Case Lemore alone might have his own reasons, and he's already getting it. When he was CBN deputy governor, nobody knew him. Uh, only a few people, maybe those in the financial sector, knew him. But today, he has become a popular name because he's contesting for election. So maybe that is his own uh, way of living a legacy and trying to change the dynamics. He's a brilliant mind, and he has gone to a lot of debates, and we have said the stuff is made up. So we wish him okay. well. I wish him well through him. Okay, and Mr. Tara, finally. Well, um, just like my brother rightly said, uh, there is no cause right now to castigate the man. Uh, his antecedents are, are quite impressive. Uh, nothing tried, nothing gained. This is somebody that feels that he can affect the desire to change Nigeria's need. And so for now, we cannot snitch him for any reason. Although, like I always say, uh, Nigerians are sick and tired of deceptive rhetoric, no doubt about that. But we'll, what are we going to do? We'll keep accepting those and listening to those rhetorics until we get somebody that will walk the talk. But I commend him for his actions. I mean, he's a source of inspiration to a lot of Nigerians. So let us commend him and uh, uh, also encourage others to follow. If okay. I just pray he's going to do, it's going to be a question of do as I say, 
not do, no, sorry, yeah, there, there is going to be a person of doing what he say and not just do as I say and not as I do. Okay. Well, I'm Rossi Boke and uh, Upunabo Inko Tarea, our political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we'll discuss the allocation of the 2022 budget for the National Assembly and why we cannot access it. We'll be back shortly.